Hi everyone, it's the Math Sorcerer here with Chegg. In this video, we're going to be discussing area and applications to integrals. Let's do an example. Find the area of the region that lies under the graph of f of x equals x squared plus 4 over the interval from 0 to 3. Let's carefully work through this solution. We're going to start by writing down the formulas that we need to do this type of problem. The area is going to be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the finite sum as i runs from 1 to n of f of c sub i times delta x. And so c sub i and delta x have their own formulas. Delta x is the width of the interval. It's going to be b minus a over n, or rather the width of the subinterval. So each subinterval is going to have an equal width, and it's equal to b minus a over n. And c sub i is the endpoint we're going to be using. It's a plus i delta x. So every time you're doing one of these problems, it's a really good idea to write down the formulas that you're going to use because it will really help you memorize the formula. So in this particular problem, we can start using the formulas now. The first thing you do is you compute delta x. So a is 0 and b is 3. So I'm going to write that here. a is 0 and b is 3. Those are the endpoints of your interval. And then you can compute delta x. So delta x is equal to b minus a, so 3 minus 0, over n. And n is just n, so you have 3 over n. I'm going to go ahead and write it again and put it in a box. So delta x is equal to 3 over n, because we're going to need it in a minute. So step one, you find delta x. So that piece is taken care of. So we have our delta x. The next piece to focus on is c sub i. So let's go ahead and fill that in. Well, a is 0. So it'll be 0 plus i times delta x, which is just 3 over n. So c sub i is equal to 3i over n. Again, I'm going to put this in a box because it's important. Plus, if you're doing this for like maybe a class or something, you know, the more work you show, the better, right? And putting things in boxes makes it really easy for the person looking at your work. Okay, so we've got the delta x, we've got the c sub i, we just need f of c sub i. So f of x is x squared plus 4. I'm going to write it again over here. Even though it's up here, I'll write it again. f of x is equal to x squared plus 4. That's our function. And we have to compute f of c sub i. So basically, we have to take the c sub i and plug it into the x. It'll be f of c sub i, which is simply 3i over n. And then your x is 3i over n, so it's parentheses 3i over n, and then the whole thing is squared. Then you have a plus 4. This is equal to... So you square the 3, so you get 9. You square the i, so you get i squared. And you square the n, so you get n squared. And then you still have the plus 4. And I'm going to go ahead and write that one more time. I'll write it over here and put it in a box, just like I did the other pieces. So we have f of, I'm going to write it as f of c sub i this time, even though c sub i is 3i over n, just, just so we have it and it fits what we have up here. We said that was 9i squared over n squared plus 4. So that's going to go in a box as well. So now we have all of the pieces of the sum. So now I'm just going to go ahead and write down the sum. So you see how I'm doing it in pieces. First you find delta x, then you find c sub i, then you plug it into f of c sub i. And you know the steps because you know the formula, right? So we now we're just, we have this, we have this, now we're just going to write it all down. So I'm, oops, let me get back my box there. There we go. Let's go to a different color. So I'm not going to write the limit down yet. Um, you can write it down. I'm, I'm going to wait to the end. And the reason is once you write the limit down, you're supposed to keep writing it. So if you forget to write it, it's technically wrong. So I like to write it at the very end. So i goes from 1 to n. And we have f of c sub i times delta x. So I'll write it f of c sub i times delta x. This is equal to the finite sum. As i runs from 1 to n, and then f of c sub i, we have that. That's 9i squared over n squared plus 4. So I'm going to put that in parentheses. 9i squared over n squared plus 4. 
So that's our f of c sub i that we're replacing. And then delta x, oh look, it's in a box. <laughs> so that's why it's good to have things in boxes because you can find them, right? I mean, this is, this is a lot of work. All right. And now we're gonna distribute the three over n. I'm just gonna distribute it through to both terms. So this is equal to the finite sum as i runs from one to n. And just distribute the three over n. So three times nine is 27. And we still have the i squared in the numerator over, and then n times n squared is n cubed. We have parentheses plus four times three is 12. Then we have the n down here. Okay, so the next step is uh, a key step and how much work you show at this point is up to you. I'm gonna show you what I have found to be the easiest way to do it. So basically we're gonna break this up because you can break up sums using properties of sums. So anything that doesn't have an i, we're going to pull it out. So for example, here we have 27 i squared over n cubed. We're gonna pull out that 27 over n cubed. Watch this, then I'm gonna write the sum as i runs from one to n, a lot of notation, and then we have i squared. You see that? So it's the same thing. Basically, we just pulled out this, this term, 27 over n cubed. If, you, if it doesn't have an i, you can pull it out. If it has an i, you cannot pull it out. Plus, let's pull this one out. 12 over n, finite sum, i goes from one to n, and then this time we're left with the number one, right? Because 12 over n times one is 12 over n. So very, very key step. And now we're going to use some formulas. I'm gonna write the formulas over here really quickly in yellow. We need the formula for the sum of the squares. This is a, a very famous formula. And it's a little bit weird. So if you have the sum uh, as i runs from 1 to n of i squared, it's n, m plus 1. That part's easy to memorize. And it's got a 2m plus 1 and a 6 on the bottom. And if you're wondering for tips how to memorize this, uh, the truth is that I just memorized it because it's weird to me. It, it's, the n and the m plus 1 is easy, but the 2m plus 1 and the 6, it just takes a little bit of work to memorize. I always think, ah, what a formula, and then I write it down. <laughs> it's just... And then this one is just gonna be n. Whenever you add up uh, one from one to n, you just get n. So this is equal to 27 over n cubed. And let's try to like write down the formula without looking. So it's n, n plus one. And then you've got that two n plus one and the n to six. Very uncomfortable formula. I remember this took me a long time to memorize. So everything I've circled here is being replaced with this formula. Plus 12 over n. And then everything I'm circling here is just going to be n. Now let's go ahead and take the limit. So let's go to blue. Because now we want the limit, right? The limit. Actually, let me write, let me, let's formalize it. So area is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the finite sum. Right? This is the definition as i runs from 1 to n of f of c sub i times delta x. The more you write it, the more you memorize it, right? So a is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity. And now we're just gonna basically copy paste everything you see here. So I'll write quickly, 27 over n cubed, n, n plus one, two n plus one over six. And then plus these cancel, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cancel them. You notice I haven't canceled anything else though. Why? Because these limits, uh, you're always gonna compute them using the uh, ratio of the leading coefficients. So basically all that matters is the leading coefficients. So for example here, it's going to be tw it's going to be 27 times n times n times 2n. That's going to be 54 n cubed. On the bottom, it's 6 n cubed. Those are the terms of highest degree with the biggest exponents. And it's just because they match, and they always will in these problems, it's just 54 over 6 plus 12. Don't forget to multiply, okay? In your head, at least. I, I wrote the little arrows to indicate what we're multiplying. So don't forget the 2n. It's a very common mistake. So it's 27 times 2 is 54. That's how you get to 54. And then the 6 is on the bottom. 54 over 6 is a conveniently nice number. It's, uh, it's 9. You get 9 plus 12, which is equal to 21, which is actually the area under the curve of this graph from 0 to 3. So we've used calculus to find area. Anyways, kind of a long video. Hopefully you've learned some math. And if you feel you have, make sure to check out more videos on Chegg. Until next time, good luck and take care.